Okay, so regarding the evolution of man, the first one we are going to learn is about the uh, apes in the fossil record among the, evolu uh, in the evolution of man. The first one it is Dryopithecus. Dryopithecus is a collective name for a group of apes discovered in the early Miocene time, and uh, it was first described and by Dr. Leakey on an island in Lake Victoria, and he called it a pro concept uh, today it is known as a dryopithecus and it is now believed that dryopithecus represent a common ancestor uh, to the present day african apes and humans so it is considered to be a common ancestor to both the uh, family pongidae and uh, the uh, hominidae okay. uh, there are several species of uh, dryopithecus um, and the dry uh, Dryopithecus africanus is believed to be the ancestor of chimpanzee or the pan uh, genera genus. Then Dryopithecus major uh, is believed to have given rise to gorilla. Dryopithecus stock uh, had four limbs shorter than hind limbs like those of man. So there is a mistake over here. Four limbs shorter than hind limbs. And uh, it is believed that Dryopithecus is the distant ancestor of man. Uh, although a few investigators are of the opinion that man is not related to apes but evolved separately from Eocene, Tarsius, and Lemurs, but uh, there are characters which show the uh, closeness of Dryopithecus with the um, modern day human. In addition to Dryopithecus, three there were other prominent genera of ape like primates uh, known from Miocene and Pliocene times. And they are Ramapithecus and uh, Keniapithecus. Uh, and uh, obviously, since it is not mentioned in your syllabus, we are not going to go through that. Okay, this I named it. Then we have is the Australopithecus. Australopithecus, it is the uh, ape man or the man like apes in the fossil record. So, as we actually move towards a recent time along the geological time scale, uh, the it is uh, the evolutionary uh, and this uh, fossil ancestry it is represented by uh, smaller smaller gaps during the pliocene period and uh, many fossils were showing more man like appearance with erect posture but still retaining ape sized brain uh, those kinds of uh, fossils were uh, available from early pleistocene and the, uh, some of the important fossils of such ape men uh, is the australopithecus here Okay, uh, Australopithecus, it is the first member, uh, the first member of this particular group, the Australopithecus. It was uh, found in 1924 uh, and it was named uh, Australopithecus africanus uh, by Professor Damon Dutt in 1959. The name Australopithecus referred to southern ape because the fossils were found in South Africa and some uh, members of this uh, group uh, dated like 31 million years ago years old and these south african apes possess many characteristics of humans combined with those of um, apes and that is why it is considered to be the ape men or man like apes in the fossil record uh, the human characters of australopithecus were that is it was about four feet tall with nearly or complete upright posture uh, pelvic girdle basin like with broadly expanded ilium, locomotion strongly bipedal, then uh, um, strikingly human dentition that is, uh, the dentition was all uh, like strikingly similar to that of uh, humans. Uh, in a few features, like the dental arch was uh, a smoothly rounded parabola, then canine teeth did not project beyond the level of other teeth. Uh, there was no simian gap. Simian gap was too unique to apes, but that was absent in Australopithecus. So it is a uh, human-like character. Then uh, uh, Australopithecus may, uh, may have uh, like uh, manufactured implements and weapons out of bones. Then uh, vertebral column with uh, distinct lumbar curve. It is a character, typical character of humans, uh, Homo sapiens. And uh, foramen magnum, had a forward position under the base of the skull. For Raman Magnum, it is a uh, like opening uh, in the uh, skull through which the spinal cord comes off, isn't it? Right. Then ape-like characters of uh, Australopithecus way, 
larger teeth and jaws than those of uh, humans then uh, small brain caves with a brain capacity of uh, up to 600 uh, centimeter cube uh, the smallest normal brain capacity of modern human is about 900 centimeter cube so it against that it is far smaller brain case in australopithecus then uh, eyebrow ridges projected over eyes oh, and uh, the face it is pronathus and absence of chin okay that is these are the few features which resemble the australopithecus with that of the apes so this particular uh, uh, fossil it showed both human characters as well as ape characters okay and you can see one of the most uh, studied group it is african i mean australopithecus africanus and uh, the name says it is southern ape as we have already mentioned so this means uh, african southern ape and it was obtained from south africa you can see the red spot which uh, shows the locality from where the uh, particular uh, fossils were uh, collected and it dated to like 3.3 .3 to 2.1 million years ago um, and fossil record uh, pa skulls uh, several partial skulls not complete were obtained a number of jaw bones were obtained and various skeleton fragments were obtained and with these we can see the whole uh, uh, structure of australopithecus africanus have been restructured uh, have been reconstructed okay and uh, this is what the scientific world says about the uh, morphological features of the australopithecus africanus okay you can see the cheekbones not very wide here and uh, uh, distance between the eyes it is narrow uh, and uh, uh, australopithecus africanus uh, face is shorter and more human like than that of uh, uh, the prim primitive ancestor the afarensis then uh, smaller and uh, like rounder chin and a greater uh, reliance on the back here you can see even the uh, okay tongs child that is what uh, we will be seeing in the coming slides uh, it was a species that proved fossil hominins were present in Africa. Hominins means the uh, what they call hominin, the members of hominin. Okay, subfamily. Its discovery showed that despite having small brains, early hominins could walk upright. Upright posture was there. Uh, uh, this uh, it was actually uh, discovered by Raymond Dart uh, and in 1924. And uh, it was actually collected from a box of fossils and rocks uh, that was sent to Raymond Dart. He was a professor of anatomy of South Africa's uh, university, uh, which was a strands university. And uh, uh, this particular collection was made from the Buxton uh, Lime Works at Tong on the edge of Kalahari Desert. And that may be the reason why it is referred as the Tong Child. Okay, we'll see it in the pre coming presentation. And uh, this is about uh, Raymond Dart. Uh, in 1925, they, uh, Dart named the species Australopithecus africanus. Since then, uh, like many other fossils have been found in cave deposits at uh, many other places and including nearly intact skulls and skeletons. Okay. Uh, so this is the Tong child. Okay, Tong child was the first um, Australopithecus africanus fossil to be found, and it is as a type specimen for the species. And assessing the age of death in extinct species uh, is difficult since the rate of growth and maturation is unknown. But comparisons with living primates provide clues, and the Tong child retains all its milk teeth, and the first permanent molars are just erupting in them. And this pattern appears at about six years in humans and about two to three years in great apes. That is in the um, in apes. Okay, the uh, molar teeth erupts usually about two to three years, and uh, it is like uh, in about around like six years in humans. Microscopic analysis of tooth enamel and bone formation rates suggest a more ape-like pattern. So the tongue child is likely to have been two to three years old when it died. Okay. You can see here uh, there are uh, many uh, like ape-like as well as uh, human-like characters here. Now regarding the physical features of Australopithecus, many of the specimens are fragmented and distorted. 
but uh, nearly all parts of the skeleton are represented by Africanus uh, fossil record and modest bo body size it shows and uh, capable of upright walking with a pattern of growth and maturation more similar to modern apes than humans and some adult skulls appear to have been la much larger uh, um, uh, which may indicate differences between the sexes and perhaps a harem like social organization similar to that seen in modern gorillas uh, the variability in skull size may also represent two different groups okay may okay so it is not so clear but uh, different sizes of skulls have been obtained different size skulls height is believed to be like 3 to 4.5 3.7 to 5 4.5 and uh, brain size like uh, 428 to 625 cubic centimeter as against uh, uh, like more than uh, uh, around 1000 in the uh, humans. The skull, it is rounded and lightly built. The brain volume uh, is similar to the mean values of modern day uh, apes, but the cranial vault is uh, domed and the muscle markings are faint. The neck muscle attachments are low on the back of the skull, which sits on a vertical spine. And on the uh, face, the raw edge, it is modest and the cheekbones are thin. But the upper jaw is broad and projecting. Okay, this is an ape-like character. The front teeth are correspondingly large and the canines show slight sexual dimorphism. Uh, this is a skull obtained. Actually, this is just a reconstruction from whatever the uh, skull remains have been obtained through the fossil records. And here we can see the uh, skulls. Okay, so it is... Um, you can see the character's broad upper jaw, uh, domed brain case here. It's the dome like over here. Then brain size similar to that of the uh, modern apes. It was smaller as compared with the humans. And uh, again, cheekbones. Okay, we have already seen regarding that. So the, these are the few uh, intact uh, bone remains which are uh, available. And with regard to the upper body, the relatively long arms uh, then actually in the case of humans hind limbs are more longer than uh, fore limbs but in the uh, australopithecus africanus obtained here it, it shows that it is uh, like a for long the arms are longer and the shoulder mobile shoulder long large hand bones indicate a load bearing upper body australopithecus africanus was probably an adept climber and would have held its uh, trunk upright when feeding okay so these are a few features of the upper body part. Regarding the lower body part, uh, the pelvis, femur uh, and foot bones indicate that it could comfortably walk bipedally. Uh, however, the toes are long and the foot is more mobile than that of the modern humans with a flexible arch and more divergent big toe. So the lower vertebrae of the spine also has small surface areas that in, than in modern humans. Uh, uh, perhaps suggesting a different range of motion or weight bearing capacity okay uh, so this is the na nature of the um, what you call uh, the skeletal parts uh, towards the lower part of the body and pelvis it is adapted for bipedalism but it is uh, not uh, completely like that of humans it is not exactly similar to that of humans so it may be slightly different uh, uh, but towards the bipedalism okay then six lumbar vertebrae in lower back which is some uh, sometimes seen in modern humans the rib cage would have been cone shaped and uh, that is a character of apes now the next one we have is the homo habilis uh, it is otherwise referred as uh, um, earlier referred as australopithecus habilis okay it is uh, uh, like a when we speak about the fossil records, uh, we have already seen apes in the fossil record, ape man in the fossil record, and here you can see man in the fossil record, that is humans in the fossil record, okay, homo habilis. So it comes to, uh, there are differences, like um, when, we, we, when we study descent of, uh, descent of modern man from uh, ape-like man, uh, probably a species of Australopithecus may have got in, evolved into the genus Homo to which we belong. Okay, so Australopithecus may have got evolved to uh, the um, genus Homo. Okay, so uh, it may be Australopithecus africanus, then Australopithecus or the Homo habilis, then Homo sapiens later. Okay, that may be the how it could have evolved. Okay, so here we have the um, handyman or the homo habilis okay so uh, from here so in this presentation we saw the ape man 
the ape like uh, ape for the 